here to give this show some much needed credibility. <laughs> it's your current Attorney General and your next Governor, Josh Shapiro. Hey everybody. How are you? Hey John. Thank you for being here. How are you? I'm good. Hi gang. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, so I'm the guy that's given us credibility here? Yeah, you're, that, you oh, okay. absolutely, 100%. Got it. 100%. Got it. Good that's to be with you. Welcome to the Fillmore in Philly. Happy to be here. What a delight. All right, let's get into it. Uh, your opponent has called for fasting and prayer until Election Day. That's right. In the hopes that God will save his failing campaign. 40 days. Are you worried at all that this strategy is going to work? <laughs> uh, what... <laughs> Like, if it does, fuck, right? Like, we will learn a lot and we won't like it. All bets are off then, yeah. right? No, man, look, I, w whatever he believes in, he believes in. I did join him for a day of fasting last week. I would not recommend that for 40 days. Nice. I'll tell you that, but he's different. And he's super dangerous and really, really extreme. And not someone that Pennsylvania should trust their vote with for governor. I'll tell you that much. So... You know, we've got these radical candidates running all over the country, these, these MAGA people, and uh, I think this is a signal example. When you're running against someone as extreme as Mastriano, someone who has ha said outlandish things about uh, COVID, someone who has taken extreme positions on abortion, on, on LGBT issues, on democracy, who was literally at the insurrection, uh, opposes marijuana decriminalization. You go on and on. Uh, how do you drill down on the simplest, best argument against someone like that when they're making strange headlines all the time and you're trying to figure out the best case? Yeah, it's harder than you'd think because he gives you a lot of material to work with. But um, he, here's the bottom line. Uh, unless you think like him, unless you pray like him, unless you marry like him, unless you worship like him, unless you look like him, he doesn't think you should count. He doesn't think your views matter, and he doesn't think you should sit around the table of progress. Here's my view. No matter what you look like, where you come from, who you love, or who you pray to, you belong in Pennsylvania, and I want to be your governor. I like that. You know, I don't know why this specific example really got to me, but he you know, gave this absurd speech where he talked about getting pole dancing out of elementary schools, something we were unaware of. I was big, unaware of that. Not actually. as big a problem yeah. as I, I didn't realize. Yeah. Uh, having come to discover it is a big problem. And I remember seeing that and just being struck by this sort of the noise and chaos and nonsense coming out of so many of these Republican campaigns. And it's like, hey, man, this is a job about paving a fucking road. Like, what are you going to actually do? How do you strike a balance between making sure People in the Commonwealth understand just how dangerous this person is. Well, actually building a case for what you want to do so you have a mandate on day one. Look, every day I travel all across Pennsylvania. Today I was in the city of Philadelphia all day, and tomorrow I'm going to be in rural counties uh, across northeastern Pennsylvania. And I talk about the same four basic things. Every Pennsylvanian has a right to a great quality public education. Second, they got a right... They got a right to make sure their kids walk to and from schools on safe streets. And third, we got a right to make sure that our economy lifts everybody up, including those who have been forgotten and left behind for a whole long time. And then finally, fourth, we have a right to the fundamental freedoms that we've come to rely on for so long, including the right for women to be able to control their own bodies. And that's, I got to tell you, that's what I focus on day in and day out. He focuses on trying to take away our fundamental freedoms. I try and focus on protecting him. Listen, it ain't real freedom to tell women what they're allowed to do with their bodies. It's not. And it's not freedom to tell our children what books they're allowed to read. It's not freedom to tell someone they can work a 40-hour work week, but they can't be a member of a union. And it sure as hell isn't freedom to say, y'all can go vote, but he's going to pick the winner. That's not freedom. So every day, we talk about creating real opportunity for folks, great schools, safe communities, great economy that lifts everybody up, and protecting real freedom. And that's what's on the ballot here. So he can go out and say all kinds of wacky things every day about this elementary pole dancing or whatever thing he was talking about, 
But the bottom line is I'm going to stay focused on trying to make Pennsylvanians' lives better each and every day. So if everybody does what they're supposed to do and you win this race, which is what will happen if everybody does what they're supposed to do. You all going to do what you're supposed to do? There you go. As governor, what can you do to get the word out that Philadelphia isn't just a cheesesteak town? And we love cheesesteaks, but it's a sandwich town. Not enough people understand this. Uh, it's, and, and honestly, and, and this obviously is not something I, I did not know I was going to say this until today. Uh, Uh-oh. I'm, I'm prepared to say it's a better sandwich town than Chicago. There you go. I'm saying it's better, and I'm going to say it's better than New York. There you go. And obviously it's better than L.A. L.A. doesn't know how to make a sandwich. Uh, but people don't know. And I, honestly, I, obviously I think it's been a failure of both, both parties for a long time. What can you do as governor to kind of make sure people understand that you guys are doing things with sandwiches that people don't know about? Well, they're wet and it's good. Yeah. They're it's, good. it's a good wet. That doesn't happen all the time. <laughs> you, in other places, you open it up and it's wet and you say, no. Philadelphia, you say, sweet. Yeah, I... I I don't know that there is such a thing as a good wet when it comes to a sandwich, John. But I, wow! And you know I'll, what? He'll also tell you the things you don't want to hear. <laughs> I'll give you that, man. I'll tell you what. I'll take a Wawa sandwich over any sandwich anywhere in the United States. So uh, when you and John Fetterman uh, made a deal with the devil to have the best possible opponents possible, uh, what did you give up? What did you? What promise did you make? to Satan himself that in a fucking tough year you'd be up against these super quacks from New Jersey. <laughs> Can I get away with a no comment on sure, that fine, one? Sure, yeah. fine, Sure. They are unique, aren't they? <laughs> and they are special. It's unbelievable. Uh, was New Jersey the... is not sending their best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm from New Jersey. That's New Jersey energy. That's why they're doing so poorly. <laughs> so I think, like, uh, at the national level, people are really focused on, on your race uh, because, obviously, we've seen what happens when you have an extremist running uh, a state when people are denying elections. You, there's been a big focus on the race for the Senate. Can you talk a little bit about, for people that may not have heard as much, about, what, about the race to uh, uh, flip the legislature and why that's on the table right now and, and what sort of, what a kind of uh, a, a strong turnout for the governor's race, for the Senate race, can do to help kind of make change here? You know, let's look at the world post Dobbs for a minute. Dobbs says that um, no longer will there be federal protection for women across this country, that abortion will be left up to the states. And it's one of the issues I get asked about and talk about day in and day out. By the way, wherever I am, rural, urban, suburban communities. And the bottom line is we have to talk about the reality, and that is that this legislature, which we have in Harrisburg right now, keeps putting abortion bans on the desk of the governor. Thankfully, our governor keeps vetoing it, and I have vowed to veto any bill that undermines a woman's right to choose here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And so we talk about that from a defensive posture, similar to when they put the bill on my desk to make Pennsylvania a right-to-work state and do away with unions, I'll veto that bill as well. But boy, oh boy, if we had a legislature that actually allowed us to play some offense where we could pass non-discrimination laws in Pennsylvania, for example, where we could raise the minimum wage to at least $15 an hour, where we could invest more in public education, ensure that we have a mental health counselor and Votech back in our schools, Imagine what we could do if we could play some offense. Now, I know how to work with Republicans, but it'd be great if we had, for example, Joanna McClinton as the first black woman speaker in the history of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And I'd love to see that happen. I'd love to be able to play some offense. And I'm gonna partner up with our legislators who are running in tough races around the Commonwealth to see if we can do that. Like Lisa. Lisa Borowski, yes. who's here. Lisa Borowski who, I, Borowski, who I saw today, got like dozens of people coming out on a Saturday morning to knock on doors. So incredible enthusiasm to flip, flip, that, flip that district. It's really cool. Lisa's doing a great job. Yeah. 
before we let you go, uh, you've graciously agreed uh, to see if this audience understands the stakes as well as we do. You know? To, to be clear, I've not agreed to anything. He hasn't agreed to but, it, but, anything, but I feel... I feel <laughs> That's true, actually. Yeah. He hasn't agreed to a damn thing. So, so we'll see, we'll see what, what you're proposing. And I'm proposing it, and, and then he's we'll not decide. a part of this. Right. And then, okay. then he has the deniability he needs. That's right. That's right. Which is important. That is important. Especially yeah. nowadays yeah. with everything that's going on. Uh, all right. Well, so now it's time for a game we're calling Pole Dancing for Democracy. A title he did not approve. Thank you all very much. All right. <laughs> a title he did not approve or know about. No. Uh, Kendra, I believe, is out there. Hello. Hi. Over here. Oh, Kendra's up in front. Hey, Kendra. Hello. Uh, this segment is designed to be both educational and to fill you with the proper level of rage. Uh, your next governor and I will trade off asking questions, and if you'd like to tackle a question, please raise your hand. Kendra is in the house and will come around. I'll kick it off. Last week, Doug Mastriano vowed to remove what he called graphic pornographic books and pronoun games from schools. What else did he pretend is a problem in public schools so he could say he'd remove it, even though no one actually believes this is an issue because most people aren't trapped in a Facebook fever dream? CRT? No, uh, very, so close. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it was pole dancing, and <laughs> um, never have seen someone whiff harder on something they were given to the answer to five fucking times. Uh, way to go. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> it was literally on the screen. We talked about it moments earlier. Uh, but you know what? Uh, we're easing into it. Uh, uh, Mr. Attorney General, the next question is yours. All right. So my opponent, who, as you know, participated with the mob in the violent insurrection on January 6th to try to stop your votes from being counted, an announced an election integrity plan which would require all Pennsylvania voters to do what? Do I get to call on people? You or can call you? on people. If yeah. Um, whoever's jumping up the most right now, you seem to be jumping up a lot. You have <laughs> fingers waving in the air. Hi, what's your name? Uh, hi, my name is Elizabeth, and I believe he's going to require all of us to re-register. That's, That's right. right. That's yes. right. Imagine. He wants you all to have to go down to the DMV and re-register. Who wants to do that? All right. Sounds like yeah. you're not for that plan. It's not a great plan. And also, it does, it does capture what is for uh, Republicans the ideal moment, which is a moment where there are zero people registered to vote. There you go. Uh, Next question. In response to accusations of anti-Semitism, Doug Mastriano has pointed to a man named Pastor Don who does what before some of Doug Mastriano's events? What do, what do you think? What's your name? Paul. Paul, what, what happens? Pole dancing. Pole dancing. No. You're Paul, doing bits? Paul. You're doing bits? That's not the That's answer That's not the answer, Paul. Paul. Oh, that person seems to think they know. Paul was trying to be funny. He blows a shofar. That's correct. Yes, that's right. Yes, famously the blowing of the shofar cures anti-Semitism within a 500 yard radius. <laughs> people don't know that. They don't, people, no. People don't it's talk. It's scientific, it's it is scientific. science. Yeah. It is science. It's all science, all science. All right, um, my opponent has tried to obscure the timeline of his extreme abortion beliefs, but there's only so far he can run from the interview he gave to WITF, which is an NPR station in Central PA, in which he said, women who get an abortion should be charged with murder. What year did he give this interview? It was not the 1800s. It was not the 1800s. Uh, Though he sometimes dresses like it's the 1800s. Well, that's another topic. We should ask about that. We, we'll get to it. Yeah. We'll get to it. John, call on somebody. Uh, Hi, what, what, what do you think, sir? This year, 2022. So close. So close. It was 2019. Uh, 2019. 2019, he said that. But, but you did great. Thank you. But, but literally, no, but seriously, folks, he wants to not only ban abortion, with no exceptions, not for rape or incest or to save the life of the woman, he wants to then charge her with murder. That's what we're up against here in this election. That's why you need to vote. That's why you need to vote. And, and I do think, like, look, we're, I think it's important that we try to find joy in this slog when we're facing these really extreme and terrible people. Um, there's that's a, why I'm doing this show. That's why he's yeah. here. It's this not for, is all it's not about for his the health. joy. No. He doesn't want to be here. He's doing this for you. 
But, uh, but I do think sometimes, like, oh, there's this, like, oh, you know, Doug Mastriano is so extreme. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Republicans are going to turn out. They're going to turn out like crazy. And we need everybody to do it. Like, this is real. This is serious. If he wins, this is really on the table. And I don't believe a single poll that says it won't be close, and neither should you. And everybody should act like it's going to be close, especially because Absolutely. every person you turn out Absolutely. not only will help elect this governor, but in your district will help elect uh, a, 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 a state representative that could help That's flip right. the legislature, that'll help make sure we keep the Senate. So, like, I, we're in the fi final home stretch That's here, right. and I'm stopping mid game to say this. I know a lot of people have signed up, but a lot of people haven't. And we're, you have to go to Vote Save America. If you haven't yet, that's fine. If you haven't signed up yet, that's fine. But now you have to. We're in the last three to four weeks of this thing. A bunch of people are just starting to pay attention. They don't know about Doug Mastriano. They don't know about Josh Shapiro yet. They're just tuning in. And you can be at their door, and you can be on their phone, and you can be the person that helps them understand the stakes. Because right. the news isn't going to tell them. The ads are going to try to lie about it. Fox News is going to try to lie about it. Mastriano is going to try to lie about it. So you have to go door to door, and you have to tell your neighbors what the stakes are. Because every single person needs to sign up. We have to show up like we did in 2020. We have to show up like we did in 2018. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry, I was overcome. No, no, no. I'm just trying to process the fact that people are just tuning in to learn about me, and it's on this show. That's... <laughs> Listen, yeah, uh, it's tough. I, yeah. I, you know, this is why you gotta go to, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And no, they're, getting a good. they're getting a good sense. I think it's good. No, but you raise an important point. I know I'm getting us off the cue cards here, which is somewhat by design. The, um, it, it, John's right, but in, in all sincerity, just showing up tonight and feeling good and thinking about politics, it's not enough. Just posting something on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, it's not enough. In, in all sincerity, we are not far from where our democracy was born 246 years ago. And if you look at the story of our American democracy, it's been ordinary Americans rising up, demanding more, seeking change, pursuing a more just society, looking at their kids and grandkids and saying, I wanna make this place a little better for you than the way I found it. And the way that happens is by organizing, mobilizing, and voting. You know, my name may be on the ballot, but it's your rights and futures that are on the line right now, and it's our democracy at stake, and we need you in the game with us, participating and voting. I really need you, I really need you. So I think that's going to be a great note to leave it. So I'm going to ask one final question uh, to the crowd, which is this. In August, the internet was treated to a photo of, Doc, of Doug Mastriano. Uh, it is from 2013 to the 2014 school year. Uh, please note that the Civil War ended in 1865, uh, and we won. Uh, uh, what was Doug Mastriano wearing in the photo? Seems like a lot of people know the answer. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Molly. What was he wearing in the photo? A Confederate uh, soldier uniform. That's right. That's right. And you know what? I guess what I would say is once an insurrectionist, always yeah. an insurrectionist. I mean, listen, Molly, you got the answer right, but th think about this for a minute. This is a guy who as a grown ass man, <laughs> not as part of some reenactment, on the grounds of the U.S. Army War College, chose to wear the uniform of the Confederacy. That's the uniform of the traitors. These are the folks that went to war to defend slavery. And that's who he chose to recognize by wearing that uniform. Hey, Maya Angelou told us, when someone tells you who they are, believe them. This guy has shown us who he is. We gotta believe him and we gotta vote. We gotta vote. Your next governor. Josh Shapiro, thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. That was great. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody.